Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. I was contacted by Down Up Right. We've checked them out before. Uh, it was uh, 60 minutes of 60 genres. It was a bonkers idea and ended up being pretty cool. They reached out again and said, hey, you want to check out some new stuff? And I was like, sure, 100%. Uh, they dropped a new album today. If you're interested in this, there's a whole album that you can go check out. The album is called Manic Episode, but we're just going to be checking out one of the tracks. Uh, track 2 called Brain Pills featuring Dante Velour. So, let's dive into this, see what's going on with some Down Up Right. song's half over already and I'm barely getting a grasp of what's going on. Alright, so the guitar duet harmonically out of phase with each other and then ideologically out of phase with well, that's the wrong word. They're just two separate ideas. Constantly rising pitch, increasing intensity, anxiety. Alright, that goes into the next track there. All right, so <laughs> we've heard hyper pop in the past. This is sort of along those same lines, but grittier, crunchier like rock tends to be. Is there a hyper rock? And if there isn't, is this uh, you know something that we could create the, the genre tag for? It is absolutely bonkers there's it's a little bit of everything right so so catch this we have the very groovy beat to it that feels like it would be at home in a pop song or an electronic track maybe even hip-hop just something where a very core simple beat is highly valued in in the listener that is the thing that makes the most sense to me in this song. It's just that really punchy bass kick that comes in and lays down that groove that you can move your body to. And it just it creates the flow and the energy throughout the track, keeps everything sort of uh, grounded and, and honed in. Because aside from this, there's a lot of ideas that are just going in every direction. I mean... We have the guitar, right? Pretty cool riff. And that riff is punctuated by this very dissonant uh, movement. The da -na -da -na. Like those four notes just clash so hard within themselves, but also within the harmony that's presented around it. And so we have dissonant harmony 
right from the get-go. I think this was like bar two where we started to hear this. Um, and that, that little motif, that punctuating idea is present throughout the entire track. Anytime that I think that we've begun to move towards something a bit more consonant, we always shift back to this as a way of, of punctuating an idea before looping back on it and reminding the listener, hey, this song isn't safe. It, it, it gets crunchy, it gets dirty, it gets gritty, and, uh, you know, that's just something that's going to happen all the time. And you can never, you never fully get away from that. And of course, when we got to the guitar duet, they were playing the same exact thing, harmonizing with each other with consonant harmony. But that's only half of the solo. The other half is the right pan guitar just kind of making noise, texture, with its crackling and overdrive and distortion and all that. And then the guitar over on the left trying to do something melodic, but it's dissonant within itself and it's drastically clashing with the guitar on the other side. So they were kind of working together, but not in a positive way. And then they were totally on, on you know, two completely different wavelengths for the second half of the solo. And then that loops in on itself and we go back to the tense harmony and then again, back to the split ideas. The guitars just never want to work together on this track. Uh, just constantly clashing with each other, even at their most cooperative. Um, and so, you know, this idea of, of dissonance, of, of negativity, uh, yeah, we're going to stick with that word. Negativity exists uh, pretty much everywhere on the guitar, whether it's, you know, clashing with its, uh, with its atmosphere, with its environment, or clashing with the direct collaborator, the other guitarist. Uh, although I think, you know, it's just down upright. This is all electronic. But, you know, hypothetically, there'd be two guitarists. <laughs> uh, and they're just not working with them either. So... Yeah, just, just clashing ideas constantly, everywhere, consistently present in the guitar work. But I also want to focus away from the instruments into the atmosphere of this. The production is just gritty, like, all the time, and it's very full. I don't think the production ever thins out into a way where... I can feel any sort of space. And the song ends up feeling very, very stuffy, very claustrophobic because of that. It's just a full sound all the time. And that sound feels like it's even pushing against that sound sphere, trying to break through. It's just such a gritty, crunchy tone that to me, uh, you know, speaks of, of overdrive, of clipping, of the sound being larger than what the song can withhold. And so we have all these layers of all these ideas and they're all crunchy and gritty on their own and combined they're just creating this wall of sound. And it just feels very antagonistic. It's a very noisy track. It, uh, you know, it reminds me of stuff like, uh, you know, post metal or noise rock. <laughs> I mean, that, that one's right there in the genre name, but it's, it's a noisy song right here. Um, and it's it's on every level, you know. Just like the guitar is dissonant all the time on some uh, parameter, so too with the atmosphere. Whether it's an individual instrument that's just gritty and crunchy, or if it's the overall production, or all of the layers, or the way that the layers are clashing with each other, and the way that the timbres mix, it's just a gritty sound all over the place. And this even bleeds into the vocals which i think the when the vocals came in i was overwhelmed so i might be misremembering this um but the vocals came in quite a bit clearer than the last set of uh sentences that we heard from them and it almost feels like the vocals were infected over time where they started out a bit more human and then were warped and changed and crunched up towards the end of the song um so you know the the atmosphere of the song was transforming this core voice that that felt the most normal out of everything and eventually corrupted it into the atmosphere of the song which you know, made the vocals crunchy and, and distorted and noisy. And so what kind of stood out a little bit as, 
you know, uh, an instrument that kind of sits outside the bands a little bit, which isn't uncommon in in electronic music with vocals. They typically get pushed above the the instrumental stuff so that you can hear them, right? I mean, pop electronics stuff does this all the time. But I think it's interesting that the music kind of reached up and grabbed the vocals that were sitting above it and pulled it down into the mix, um, turning it, you know, uh, t- taking the, the timbre and shifting it into something that felt more appropriate for the music and kind of creating that more robotic sound for it. And I thought that was a pretty cool idea, too. Oh, I just noticed something. Let me uh, pull this up real quick. Uh, that button right there. All right. So, um, the album art here, there's this light coming out of his, uh, you know, the dude's forehead and stuff. Uh, but, uh, I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be a musical staff. That's a neat little idea there. Well, no, it's too many lines. Yeah, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. Yep. Too many lines. But still, it kind of gives that same idea. I don't I don't know if that was intentional or not. Maybe it's just an aesthetic choice. My initial, you know, I, I look at it and just from a glance, I'm like, yeah, that's a staff. But no. Anyways. <laughs> um, dang, what else do I want to bring up on this? Oh, yeah, dude. So... It's a short song. What what was this? Less than two minutes? 2.11. And we had a fade out after like... I don't know. Seven seconds past two. So... Yeah, it's about two minutes long, I'd say. Hey, the song gets right into it. It's overwhelming all the time. It just drags you through it. And then it just ends. Um... And, you know, normally with this type of length, I'll be like, you know, it, it knows what it's trying to do, right? It creates this sound, um, it, it completes its objective, and it gets out. If nothing, it leaves you wanting more, but I feel like it's a good length for what it's trying to do. Um, but I think at this point, there's also a thematic purpose for it. The album's called Manic Episode, and this is called Brain Pills. And it's very noisy and chaotic, and I'm wondering if it isn't about, um, you know, a medicine that's supposed to help uh, the way that your brain functions. Maybe you have a very noisy, chaotic brain, and you're supposed to take these pills to, to calm it down, right? Um, I think the idea that this feels as quick as it does is also supposed to be a component of it. It creates the feeling of speed and brevity, not through tempo, but through song length. By the time we get into it, it's already over. It feels really quick through that perspective. Uh, and I like that. But it also, I think, is a good length for it. This sort of uh, noisy, multi-layer, tons of ideas being thrown in all the time. Like I said, it's it's sort of like hyper noise rock right i'm gonna keep using hyper rock because i, I want i want this to take off <laughs> um it's not just noisy rock related music we don't just have uh loud explosive drums and big noisy dissonant guitar work all over the place but we also have all these ornamental ideas we have all these layers of synth tones creating these dense atmospheres, creating these ornamental um, ideas that float around the core concepts between the vocals, bass, and and guitar. Uh, Sorry, vocals, drum, and guitar. And so it can feel very overwhelming very quickly. I'd mentioned, you know, we were halfway through the song. I "I still don't have a grasp on this. (laughs) The very surface level feeling of, of anxiety 100%. I'm catching that. But like details, by the time I notice something happened, it's already gone. We're we're moving on to the next idea. It moves so quickly. Um, And, you know, I I think that's the the, the intention behind it. That's that's the purpose of the song is to feel chaotic. It's to feel like, you know, you have no control over any of this. That you can't, I don't know, you can't grasp any of it. It's also fleeting yet overwhelming. 
something that feels simultaneously like it weighs down upon you, but it's gone so quick, you can't stop it, you can't react to it. It all comes together into a, a very specific feeling of anxiety that I can't say I felt in too many songs. A lot of the times when I bring up uh, the idea of anxiety and tension, it's usually an overwhelming atmosphere. Uh, post-rock, post-metal, they like to sit within these vibes for a long time and you really feel that weight upon you. This is sort of uh, a different take on that where we explore it in such a short time that it doesn't feel like a massive weight. It feels like an impact. It feels like a quick punch and then the aggressor is gone rather than, you know, this burden sitting upon your shoulders. Anxiety still, but a different kind. Another thing I want to bring up, uh, I thought this was pretty cool, it's just a short little thing here, is that it's only the first half of the song, give or take, maybe the first 60%, where we have vocals. Most of the ending is an instrumental bit. Uh, we focus on the guitars for a while, we get some more ornamental ideas brought in around the outsides, and then the song's over. And you know, Part of that works well because of its short runtime, but I also think it's interesting just because we don't hear instrumental stuff within... Uh, well, I say we. I, with my limited exposure to electronic music, it's typically instrumental electronic music with, uh, you know, artists who particularly work within that realm. You know, your, your uh, attacker or marshmallow does he, does he put lyrics in his music often see this is like i just don't have he's like one of the biggest electronic artists and i just don't know what kind of music he makes that's how limited my exposure to electronic music is um on the other side of the spectrum though pop music uses a lot of electronic sounds but it's a hyper focus on the vocals and so i think it's really interesting that we do have this focus on the vocals at the beginning but then the instrumental bit at the end i just i haven't been exposed to anything like that and i think it's pretty cool to sort of bring a little bit of both worlds into this and allow the vocals to tell the story through the lyrics, but then also say, you know what, I also am an instrumental artist, I can tell a story through music as well, let me do that. Um, and just showing off a little bit of, uh, of their entire expertise, which I think is pretty cool. I'm going to see if I can't find some lyrics for this. Um, I kind of hope I can, but as the time at the time I'm recording this, it is unreleased, so <laughs> that's always kind of... Uh, so it's kind of a gamble if I can find those lyrics. Uh, and then, you know, we'll wrap the video up with my final thoughts. All right, so I couldn't find any lyrics. Uh, I'm going to put the blame on me. I had the email contact. I should have asked for some lyrics uh, while I was uh, chatting with them. Anyways, uh, instead, we're going to do something a little different. I did listen to the song again. I transposed some of the lyrics that I could pick up. And it seems to be about uh, being on a bunch of different uh, prescription drugs in an attempt to level out the brain waves in order to make this person happier and less manic um, and kind of level out their emotions. But they never work. Uh, the name drops like Zoloft and stuff, but it also talks about non-prescription drugs and ways to manipulate the, the mind, talking about cognac and, and other drugs um, that might be used in order to regulate one's uh, emotive state, but that none of it works because the world keeps them down. And uh, I think that's a really interesting message, uh, that the world's just so bleak. Uh, that it's, you know, mentally affecting us. But that, on the other side of things, it's also really difficult to diagnose uh, somebody. The brain, as much as we know about it, is still... We still don't know a lot about it. And so, if your brain just operates a little differently than the average person, you could end up trying 8, 9, 10, 20 different drugs until you find something that works for you. And all that time, you're basically a guinea pig and your body is going through all sorts of wild changes because you keep introducing all these different hormones and chemicals to it. And that can make you feel kind of crazy. I think the song kind of works well within that. Uh, it creates that heightened, 
heightened state of 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 being. Now, I also want to make some corrections to some of the stuff I said. Um, most of what I said is is rather accurate, and uh, I stand behind it. But I had mentioned that I felt the vocals started off a little more human. They started off less crackly. They still had a buzzsaw kind of production to them, very robotic. But it wasn't until the middle of the song and then towards the end of the song. It doesn't actually become an instrumental for the back half of the uh, the song. There's still vocals back there, but they changed. And for whatever reason, my brain categorized them as an instrument. They kind of became these shouty gang vocals. It might still just be one person with like a, a big reverb on it or something. I don't know. But uh, it kind of creates this shouting effect. And it's kind of neat. It's socketed in between two of the guitar duets. And I just, my either I missed it or I filed it away as something else. But um, yeah, this, this part is very wild. It, it's so distinct from the human voice at this point. And I think I was focusing more on the distance between these two productions on the vocals, and I just kind of assumed that the first one was more human-y, and more comparatively is accurate, but it definitely doesn't sound very human-y. It's still quite a robotic sound, but I think the idea of the voice becoming more distorted over time uh, and less less relatable to a natural voice is still uh, an accurate read and take on this. Uh, and I think that the thematic read behind that transformation is still accurate as well. But I did want to make that clarification. Um, so yeah, those are my thoughts on Down Upright's Brain Pills. Is that what this is called? Yes, Brain Pills featuring Dante Valor. Let me know what you thought of this track. If there's anything that stood out to you, anything that you would like to add on to what I said or correct me on, maybe you just want to give me your own perspective on the, on the, the track, your own take on what it's trying to do or say thematically, let me know. Put all that stuff down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. This takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. You'll also find a link to Down Upright's Spotify channel. Like I said, the album dropped earlier today. If you want to listen to more stuff like this, go there, listen to it, check it out. Um, you know, whatever. Also, if you could, like, subscribe, ring the bell. If you end up anywhere on Down Upright's place, you know, do the same for, for them as well. Show them some love from the, the Critical Reactions community. All right, that wraps it up for today. Um, I'll be back tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow. We got an album. Album review to do tomorrow. <laughs> um, otherwise, though, hopefully we can do the live stream on Sunday morning, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Otherwise, Monday we'll be back with Brutality Week. We're going to check out some brutal music that I'm not always always that i'm i'm just not gonna be looking forward to <laughs> that kind of stuff wears me out all right anyways uh until next time remember to be critical not cynical of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning afternoon or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos